Hey guys, how's it going? Today I'm putting together a terrarium. I already put together one uh, and I think it turned out really cute. And I've got the second one here because I wanted a set. And I thought this would be a really good opportunity to show you guys how I layer all of my ingredients in, in a terrarium because I do it a little bit different than a lot of the other uh, tutorials you find out there. So in this terrarium right here, I used an East Indian holly fern, which is really pretty. It's got beautiful variegation in the foliage. And then I've got a faux layer of pebbles at the bottom. It's not an actual layer and then a layer of soil with a little bit of charcoal. And then I've got decorative moss and larger stones and pine cones. So I think it just turned out wonderful. And I love the shape of these containers. I love this, it looks so clean and so modern. So let me show you a few of the things I'm gonna use for this project. There is activated charcoal and what this does is help eliminate any odors. If there's moisture that collects at the bottom it kind of absorbs that odor. I've got small pebbles, large pebbles for decoration. I've got pine cones for decoration some soil and I just chose kind of regular house plants that just require regular potting soil. So this is just, I think I'm using a Spoma organic potting soil for this project. Then I've cut some really pretty moss here and this is like chunkier moss. I think it's really pretty. Then I've got a Peperomia, which is the sweetest little plant. Love it. And then a mahogany fern and a Tectorum air plant. And this one I, is just beautiful. I don't know if you've ever seen one of these up close, but they are just ab absolutely gorgeous. So the first thing I do is I take my charcoal and you don't need a ton of it, but you're gonna wanna put a little bit of a layer on the bottom, kind of like that. The goal is not to have a whole bunch of extra moisture at the bottom, so hopefully this won't even really have to do anything. And then I'm gonna take my soil and create kind of a cone right in the middle of the terrarium so that I've got a little bit of an edge on the, along the outside so I can put my pebbles in. So we'll do just a little bit, kind of like that. And this is where I do my faux layer of stones because I really do like the way that the layering looks. I like seeing sand and pebbles and soil and uh, moss and all those good, fun, pretty looking layers. But what I have found is that if you have a really thick layer of stone at the bottom, you can actually run into more problems with root rot quicker. Because if you are accidentally giving your terrarium a little bit too much water, that water will puddle in that drainage area and it doesn't really have anywhere to go. You know, it's not making contact with the soil, so the soil's not wicking it back up to the roots of the plants or evaporating it. Um, so it just kind of lays down in there stagnant. Now the goal is to not water your plants that much. If you're giving the proper amount of water, I think a layer of gravel at the bottom is fine. It's kind of a two each their own thing. The amount of water you give uh, is just basically enough to moisten the root balls of the plant. So I usually water my terrariums with a large syringe so I can control the amount of water I'm giving them. Uh, so I just prefer not to have a layer of gravel at the bottom for drainage for that reason. That way too, the plant as it grows, it can fill this whole um, reservoir with its roots instead of coming up against a reservoir with rocks and possibly sitting water. The roots will not like that. So that's why I don't do it. I found I've had a lot better success with that. So I'm gonna put my stones around the outer edge. I want my rock layer to look somewhat substantial. You know, I wanna be able, after the curve of this glass, to still see it. So I'm gonna add a little bit more pebbles around the outside. Okay. Now with my fingers, I'm just gonna move the stones a little bit more toward the front and kind of arrange them because I'm not gonna be looking at the back of this terrarium. It's really not essential that I see a whole bunch of pebbles. So I'm gonna move these around. That's just about perfect. So it's just creating this nice kind of faux layer of pebbles when there's actually soil on the inside that goes all the way to the bottom. So now I'm gonna add my potting soil about up to this level right here. This is the easy part. You also wanna keep in mind that you need to use the correct type of soil for the type of plants you're using. So in my case, like I said, these plants just want regular potting soil, so that's what I'm using. But if you're using cactus or succulents as your plants, you wanna make sure to use a soil that's specific to them. And they also look really pretty in terrariums like this. But I wanted this for a spot in my house. It's got kind of, um, it's a bright spot, but it's more indirect light, so it wouldn't get enough light for succulents. So these plants will be great. So now I just need to plant, and I'm gonna start with this mahogany fern. I think this is such a cute little fern, and this one will do really well. Ferns tend to do really well in terrarium type situations because they like more moist soil, and um, they like the humidity. So I'm just gonna plant this one toward the back. I like that. 
And then I'm gonna go in with my Peperomia here. Now these ones tend to like a tiny bit drier soil than the ferns, and that's the beauty of watering with a syringe. I can control how much water kind of makes it to each plant. So when I'm watering my fern, I can put a little bit more on this side of the fern than I would toward the Peperomia side so that I can keep this one tiny bit more dry. I love how the fern, the foliage just is so gracefully arching and I think it kind of mimics this container. I think it's just perfect. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do my decorative layer, which will be moss and the pine cones and stones. And then in the end, I'll be sticking my little um, air plant in there kind of like that on top of the decorative layer. And this one will be watered separately from these plants. I'll be able to take this one out since it's loose and it'll just be sitting on the top. I can take it out and water it independently from these other plants. All right, so I'm just gonna layer with moss. I should probably mention that this moss is not alive. This is a super moss brand. I have it. This is super moss brand mood moss. It's just preserved sheet moss and it maintains its nice green color, but you don't have to water it. You don't have to keep it constantly moist to keep it alive because it's not alive. I get asked that question quite a bit. So thought I would touch on that. I need a little more. All right, I brought a towel out with me so I could kind of clean the glass off on the inside when I got my soil all settled. Just wipe that off. All right. Now a couple larger rocks. And then I'm gonna finish it off with some smaller dark colored rocks because I think that it will contrast the air plant really nicely. All right, I think that that is perfect. I'm gonna put my air plant in and it looks so pretty. So the air plant I will pop out of this container once a week and submerge it in water. We're in a really dry climate here in Eastern Oregon. So I actually have to, it doesn't work just to mist air plants here. You have to submerge them for 30 minutes once a week is what I do. And then I give them one misting or maybe two in the hot summer months um, as supplemental watering throughout the week. And that way they stay nice and healthy. That's how we do it here. I know every climate's a little bit different in more humid climates you can get away with simple misting, which is really nice, but um, they do really well here as long as you submerge them. So I think it turned out wonderful. And I think the best part about this type of terrarium is they're so easy to put together. They make a really great gift. It's right before Christmas. So if you know there's somebody on your list who is either hard to buy for or you haven't found the perfect thing, these are so fast and inexpensive to put together. Like this one right here, I think I'm under $10 because I did have this, like the supplies, the soil and the charcoal. And a lot of us gardeners who do projects like this, we have those supplies around. So I'm not including that in the cost, but um, that for the plant and the container under $10. This one is a little more spendy because I mean, the container's bigger, two plants, the air plant, this is kind of a, a more specialty air plant. So that one was right around 11 or $12 to buy. But, um, but I think I'm still under $30 for this larger one, which I think is really, really reasonable. Um, so if you wanted to put together a quick gift for a teacher or a friend or something like that, these are just so easy to put together. And you can choose plants for lower light situations like these ones here so that you don't have to worry about if you're giving the gift, if they don't have a really sunny place to put it, it's still okay. I always err on the side of giving low light plants as gifts so that they'll be happy wherever that person puts them. So anyway, you guys, that's how I do terrariums and the reason why I don't put gravel at the bottom. Um, and you know, to each their own on that, I think you can have success either way. Um, I realize that if you have a layer of gravel as your um, drainage area, you can actually see how much water is pooling down there, which is, I mean, that can be helpful, but the goal is to not ever have that. So just err on the light side when watering any kind of terrarium and just have fun with it. They are so fun to put together and try different combinations, new combinations of plants. So thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you in the next video. Bye.